Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Talkley here in Washington, D.C. We're just giving you the rundown on the latest CIA Project Democracy destabilization of China. And now you're really playing with fire because this is not Iraq. This is not Iran. This is a very big country. They have intercontinental ballistic missiles. They can defend themselves, and they will. And uh, you better back off and butt out and leave the internal affairs of China to the Chinese. Right? Enough imperialism. Haven't you had enough with Bush? Now you're getting left imperialism. You thought the only kind was the right-wing kind. You're getting the left-wing kind now. And surprise, it's worse, because this is more dangerous. Now, uh, we're talking about Rabia Kadir, K-A-D-E-E-R. This is now the new uh, sort of Lech Wałęsa figure, right, or the new uh, Cory Aquino. We actually, we can compare her to Cory Aquino back in the Philippines destabilization. So this charming lady is sitting here in Washington, D.C. Uh, her uh, entire subversion machine is getting $550,000 from the National Endowment for Democracy under the leadership of Dick Gebhardt of Missouri. And uh, the goal, of course, uh, is... Uh, is uh, regime change. She, she supposedly, she's very ascetic. She only gets a small salary, right? She's maybe she's not even as well off as Elias Akhmadov, the Chechen terror ambassador that we also have here. We have quite a collection. Huh? It's like the old uh, the menagerie, right? What uh, what the the British used to have in London, right? With Mazzini and Le Ronan and all the rest of the uh, the firebrands of the European continent. Now we've got. Uh, We've got these people here. United States supports all revolutions but our own. Isn't that interesting? And, of course, the whole thing is based on mob rule. And if you're a rioter and a mob, be, the motto of Obama could be, you know, rioters of the world, rioters and uh, street fighters of the world unite. You are the basis of my foreign policy. So the way it starts, then, after this toy riot, is last Saturday to Sunday in China, right, international dateline playing a role, you got to see then that it's a murder spree by these Uyghurs against the Chinese in the city of Urumqi in northwest China, in Chinese Turkestan, Xinjiang province. A murder spree by the Uyghurs against the Chinese with 150 dead most of those, as far as I can see, Chinese, because this was a murder spree. That's the basis of the new pro-democracy foreign policy. We'll see some similar highlights on the, on the Russian side in just a minute. So uh, the other thing is the signal for this. Remember, Barky Obama freed a bunch of Uyghurs from Guantanamo Bay and plots them down in Bermuda, where they are living the life of Riley. This, I think, was a signal. What else can we say? It's a signal that uh, the U.S. is now making peace. You know, it was a terrible mistake to hold those Uyghurs in Guantanamo Bay. Obviously, we condemn Guantanamo Bay for anybody, but in this case, the way they're doing it shows the intent of the uh, of the entire exercise. So then we get the we get the the murder spree going on now. President Hu of China is in L'Aquila, Italy, for the group of eight, and he has to rush back to China. Very, very interesting. Last year, the beginning of the, uh, the group of eight had to do with the, uh, the Georgia attack on Russia. This time we've got an attack on China going on, right? Isn't that interesting to see these, these parallels? So the uh, freeing of the Uyghurs by Obama, presumably a signal, and now the, the Chinese, of course, have rushed in a lot of troops, and they're saying that there's capital punishment for those who uh, who riot and murder. Well, uh, you know, that's not a big surprise, is it? There are all kinds of the, – the whole Human Rights Watch community is, of course, up in arms. The Human Rights Watch shows where they stand. We have a profile here in the Washington Post. starts on the front page with uh, – Rabia Kadir, in the uh, Tuesday, July 9th, 2009, Washington Post. She's an exile leader. She's the mother of, uh, of the Uyghur movement. That's the headline, the mother of the Uyghur movement. And in the course of this, we get people from Human Rights Watch 
saying uh, what a charming lady she is and how much Human Rights Watch loves her. Well, you know, this is the usual, this is what Jacques Sapir points to, the demagogy of human rights and humanitarian concerns with people like Kushner, the foreign minister of France, it's so discredited now because it's so obviously a crude tool of imperialist intervention and meddling in the internal affairs of these sovereign states. Now, what's the retaliation? Is there something that China can do? Right? The U.S. comes along, the soft power group with Nye and company come along saying, well, don't attack China. That's very dangerous. Let's just do this subversion. It's much cheaper. And we have some plausible deniability. The Chinese have now said, guess what, boys? We've got a method that's even cheaper than yours with even more plausible de deniability. And that's the cyber attacks. Isn't it clear to anybody uh, that the, uh, the denial of service attacks on a whole series of uh, rather important websites around the world has been a retaliation against the attack on China. And again, if you put in the, uh, the uh, pay attention to the international dateline, that China is always a day ahead of us, so to speak, you'll see that this stuff happened more or less the, uh, the same time. And remember, the buildup in China had been going on since the 26th of June. So, uh, again, Washington Post, this time the same, same day, Thursday, the, uh, the 9th of July, 35 government and commercial websites in the United States and South Korea are under attack, were under attack, through a massive denial of service attack. Now, this included U.S. Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Department of Defense, Federal Aviation Administration, Federal Trade Commission, several uh, computer uh, other sites, the Washington Post was under attack. The South Korean National Intelligence Service, the equivalent of the CIA, came under attack. The South Korean Ministry of Defense. Anyway, these are, on the whole, rather important ones. The Pentagon and the, uh, the, the South Korean equivalents there, too. Now, people in South Korea say these attacks came from North Korea. Well, not so easy with that, right? North Korea doesn't have a big cybernetic uh, striking force, um, internet geeks not too common in, uh, in North Korea just because of the uh, poverty under the uh, U.S.-backed sanctions, U.S.-imposed sanctions. Therefore, got to look further. Well, it's China, obviously. It could be China acting through computers stationed in the DPRK, North Korea, or it could be direct from China. And they, basically any honest report will tell you they don't know where it's coming from because the Denial of service attack comes from computers all over the world that have been uh, that have been put together. It is a direct retaliation. It says, "Okay, Anglo Americans, you destabilize our country and kill a you've killed hundreds. The, the official figure is 150. It's probably two or three times that. So a bloody riot, a huge bloody riot, sending in then uh, all kinds of troops. So the Anglo Americans have played their card vis-a-vis -vis Xinjiang province, and the Chinese have said, "Look." We'll put a shot across your bows. We can cause absolute chaos. We can put logic bombs into the Internet. We can bring down your whole Internet and bring your entire operation to a halt. Right? You won't be able to buy anything on, on the Internet. You won't be able to, uh, to speculate online. Right? No more E-Trade. No, uh, you know, no more of this uh, uh, stuff on, on, the, uh, on the Internet. You get the idea. And, of course, this can reach into things like you know, the controlling of electricity grids, controlling of dams all kinds of stuff. So the answer is, back off. Stop those attacks on China. We'll be back in a minute.